The Gila top minnow may look like a simple little fish, but if you follow its trajectory a little bit closer, you'll discover a complicated web affecting its survival. Among them are wastewater treatment practices, government agreements between different agencies, invasive species from other parts of the world, and thirsty humans in a desert setting. The Gila top minnow used to be one of the commonest fishes in the Gila River Basin, but because of the impacts that we've had on the river systems by drying them up, putting in non-native species, they are now no longer common and were listed as endangered in 1967. Ready? Go. Doug Duncan is a fish biologist with the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service in Tucson. He's been studying the one to two inch minnow for more than two decades. Being able to get out and see sites like this and especially see... Ooh, ooh, yep, up their phone now. My species, Gila top minnow and other native fishes, is an amazing part of the job. It's why I went into fish and wildlife biology so many years ago. There's a lot of pregnant ones too. The fish are named after the Gila River watershed and because they like to swim near the surface of the water. They used to cover a wide swath in Arizona, New Mexico, and Mexico, but they have been wiped out in the vast majority of their traditional range. Duncan says it is no longer found in the Gila River, the Salt River, the San Pedro River, or the Verde River in Arizona. It is only surviving in pockets elsewhere. Five long thin days to top minnow. On this occasion, Duncan and fellow scientist Claire Zugmeyer are conducting a survey on a short Four stretch of the Santa minnow. Cruz River south of Tucson. This, is, this one's got a little bit of black in it. The fish are thriving here, at least for now. Oh. The experts catch a couple of samples and then they study the results. Fins. Yeah, then you can see the fins when you're in the water. We're not trying to determine the population number, just a general number and really interested in what species we're finding. And um, some of them, like the top minnow versus mosquito fish, which is non-native, are really hard to tell the difference until you have them in hand. And so that's what we're, that's what we're doing. The lush green oasis appears to be natural and pristine, the way our rivers used to look. However, appearances can be deceiving. This is a disturbed habitat, the result of human meddling and planning. That cool, clean water, just a few hours earlier, it looked like this. When we first get it, it's uh, raw sewage, concentrated raw sewage, and 12 hours later after we treat it, um, it's considered class A reuse water, so it can be re reused for watering crops or lawns or anything of that nature. The cleaning process occurs at the Nogales International Wastewater Treatment Plant. It gets about 90% of its product from nearby Mexico as part of a binational agreement. In 2008, a multi-million dollar grant from the U.S. Environmental Protection Agency paid for an upgrade to the facility. Without it, the minnow would be non-existent downstream. It was a very uh, productive grant, and as you can see from our effluent, it's made a significant difference. Uh, the prior effluent to this was uh, looked like pea soup. It was thick, full of algae, full of ammonia. It was toxic to the fish, toxic to the uh, aquatic environment. The new facility is, is in full compliance with all the ammonia and, and nutrient uh, limitations. We're stacking functions. We're releasing water and creating a nice flowing river again that probably wouldn't be there otherwise. And at the same time, we're creating habitat, we're getting recharge, and we're getting this really pleasant environment that many of us don't get to see very often in the desert. There's another example of helpful human intervention in this wide open rangeland between Nogales and Sierra Vista, Arizona. Cattle are the most evident animal on this property. Nevertheless, they have little native neighbors sharing the ranch. We're at a stock tank in the San Rafael Valley on the San Rafael Ranch. This is under a program that we use called the Safe Harbor Agreement, which allows the Game and Fish Department to stock Gila top minnow and desert pupfish on the, the properties of willing landowners. Part of our efforts for conserving these species is to get them in additional habitats. And we made an application and we're successful to put in four solar wells 
and, two, and we dug two dirt tanks to store water. We built storage facilities for our, for our waters and drinkers, and the surplus water would go back into these tanks for wildlife. They're part of this landscape, it made it, uh, and, and it's compatible with us. And, and we bought this ranch because we like the big, beautiful landscape. We learned to like cows, um, and the wildlife was here before we put the cows on it. So I'm really happy to do this project. The Gila Top Minnow are succeeding in the human-made stock tank. However, in a nearby natural body of water, it's a very different story. Wiped out by a similar looking but aggressive exotic that's expanding its range at the expense of native species. Mosquito fish is gambusia. We like calling them dambusia because of the damage they cause. The mosquito fish are native to the eastern United States. Their name and their reputation as voracious mosquito larva eating machines led to their extensive distribution decades ago. The mosquito fish after the loss of water has been probably the greatest threat to Gila top minnow and many other native fishes and other aquatic species worldwide. It predates the young of the top minnow and then it harasses the adults and usually eventually they will replace a Gila top minnow population. However, recent studies reveal that native fish, such as the Gila top minnow, are as effective or maybe even better at mosquito control. So Pima County is working on a unique program that could benefit the minnow while helping people. As part of a cooperative effort with Arizona's Game and Fish Department, the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service, and other agencies, the county's health department obtained several hundred minnows from the Phoenix Zoo. The zoo has a healthy, thriving population. We were able to obtain the proper permits, get the proper type of aquarium so that we have here, and our intent is to breed these fish uh, and put them out in backyard pools and fountains, contained bodies of water, where they will eliminate any mosquito breeding uh, in those. If you're going to use the fish whenever possible, scientists surmised, why not use a local species if feasible? At this abandoned home northeast of Tucson, the county obtained a search warrant and released the fish for the first time ever. I think it's a win-win. I think it's a win for the species. It's a win for us because we're also uh, preventing, potentially preventing illness. It draws awareness. I mean, when we talk about these fish, and they're, they're pretty and everything, and they're, and they're great. Uh, but if, if people start thinking, okay, there's mosquitoes out there. Here in, here in Pima County, a lot of times you don't think about going outside and there's insects, but th there, we do have the mosquitoes out there. The fish will not be reharvested for use elsewhere due to concerns about mixing genetics from one population to another. Still, employing them for this purpose supports breeding programs, which could serve as backup populations. It also prevents non-natives, such as the mosquito fish, from being re-released into the wild. We'll see what happens after our first year. Well, I mean, we're just, we're, we're entering this with our eyes wide open and we're excited. All of these efforts may seem like a lot of work to save a little fish, but supporters say it is vital. The Gila top minnow evolved in this environment and could play a unique role on other native species such as bigger fish or birds. They're just a good visual indicator. They're not our large, fuzzy, charismatic <laughs> megafauna, but I really love our native fish. Um, it's really exciting to see them coming back. So between the trees and the fish, together it's a good indication that our river is healthy and, and doing well. In the long term, their survival hinges on many factors, including the recycled water they now call home. I'm really gratified to see the fish back in the river and, and our wonderful Gila top minnow. Uh, back as well. And that really speaks to the possibilities of restoration. If you allow the physical processes of an ecosystem to function, you get all the wildlife back. And that's what's happened here. And I, I hope if we can keep water in the river, it will continue to be like this into the future.